Well, it's now time to start to do some basic educational analysis ourselves. And we're going to use a couple of examples for you to actually try it out, see if you can do it. Uh, and in this video, we're going to work with four different um, extracts, which take us through the developments in South African education and how we shifted from apartheid education through into Curriculum 2005 how that changed with the revised national curriculum statement and how that then changed with the uh, current CAPS um, setup that we have now. And hopefully the codes will start to show up some patterns in how education has changed in South Africa over the last 20 years. In front of you is the basic uh, table, which has the eight questions, the relationship between the everyday and the specialized, uh, the relationship between specializations, inside a specialization, then the selection, sequence, pacing, and assessment of knowledge. And for each one of those, we're going to try to give a code uh, for each of the phases in South African education. So let's see what that looks like uh, and see how you find it. Um, let's start off with uh, apartheid education. And uh, here we have it. And what you're going to see in front of you is an extract taken on apartheid education. And then you're going to attempt uh, the coding of it. And what I'd really like you to do at this point is to uh, pause the video, read the statement. And once you've read it, try and see if you can work out which codes go where. Now, don't expect that you're going to use all eight codes. There might only be three or four. Uh, that work in terms of this quote and the coding. But uh, try and give a code and then try and give a reason or the quote where you think the, um, the code comes from. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at it and see what we can say about it. The first thing that jumps out for me is this one over here driven by examinations. Now, you might have found uh, it different. You might have used passive learners and read stuff into that, but I, I'm going to start with driven by examinations. And I would say that the driven very definitely gives you a solid uh, code. And pointing to driven by examinations, it means that you're in a situation where you have one exam and that basically determines uh, what goes on in the syllabus. So not only are you in a situation where uh, assessment is the driver of education, it's also very solid. Um, and I will put down driven there. Um, and then it says often entailed learning in parrot fashion. Now this becomes kind of difficult because parrot fashion is a judgmental term. And on the one side, it's kind of pointing out that not much learning is going on if you're learning in parrot fashion. It's almost like you want to use a zero code there. Um, but if you're learning in parrot fashion, that pretty much means that the teacher's in charge and that the selection is determined by the teacher. Uh, and it is one selection which can only be used because you're learning it in a parrot fashion style. So let's put parrot over here. Uh, and then characterized by a syllabus which encouraged minimal cross-fertilization. Now that's very interesting. Minimal cross-fertilization for me refers to the relationship between specializations, between subjects, and it's not allowing any cross-fertilization. So again, the coding is strong, uh, and uh, what you're pointing to there is minimal cross-fertilization. Um, I'm not going to write them all down because it's kind of hard to write uh, with the equipment that I have. And then it says that it was content-based, and broken down into convenient compartments or subjects. Now there again, you can hear this kind of situation where convenient compartments or subjects means that between the specializations, it's again solid. So I'm going to take that and point to that also being a solid code. It rigidly adhered to textbooks. Now, if you're rigidly adhering to textbooks, listen to the term rigidly adhering to textbooks, it means that the selection of knowledge is pretty much solid uh, because it's determined there's only one thing and the one thing which you're doing is textbooks. So it's done in one way and the textbooks are the way that you do it. So I would say that that points to another solid code in terms of the textbooks. Completely centered on the teacher 
with the result that the learners saw the syllabus as rigid and non-negotiable. And I think that again points to the selection and probably the sequence and maybe even the pacing as being uh, solid. So we could put solid for sequence, solid for pacing, and we can see that in terms of the situation over here where the learner saw the syllabus as rigid and non-negotiable. They had no say, there was no variety in the selection, sequencing and pacing of uh, apartheid education. So there we basically have a code which we can argue is pretty solid for apartheid education with the tendency also to be critical of it and point out to the fact that it's actually um, a poor kind of education. Uh, let's now move on to a situation where we take a look at the shift that happened and here we have curriculum 2005. Now curriculum 2005 as I just point out in the top here with the onset of democracy in South Africa, there was a strong desire to do education differently from old apartheid ways. And there was a radical new education reform process that was inaugurated that symbolically broke away from apartheid education. Now, you can hear what we're predicting over here. If the coding of apartheid education was solid, uh, we're going to expect with the radical breakaway for pretty much everything to be open. And let's see if that's the case with uh, Curriculum 2005. Again, I'd like you to pause the video at this point, read the uh, quote, and then see if you can code it yourself before we move into our coding. Right, so let's take a look at it and see if we can uh, see if the coding between ourselves are, are similar. So the first thing I'll pick up is the learning programs are seen as guides. Now that word guides, immediately notice, it's a language which is completely different to apartheid education. It's kind of more open. It's kind of allowing for more flexibility. And if the learning programs are seen as guides, that means that the teachers have some flexibility in the selection, the sequencing, the pacing of education. It also probably means that there's some kind of flexibility with the curriculum structures as well. So the term guides already gives us a situation where we suspect that everything is going to be open. Educators are encouraged to be innovative and creative in designing effective courses. So they have got some control, certainly in the selection, if they're able to design their own learning. And they're able to give a far more open situation. So let's Put selection as open um, and let's say that in terms of that it's because the teachers can be innovative and creative um, and because of the term guides right so guides innovative and creative it's very positive terms which are being given um, and then you have a situation where it says the learners are responsible for their own learning and progress. Now you can hear it opening out to the learners, but also then it says constantly motivated by feedback and positive comment concerning the worth of the efforts. Now if you're constantly motivated by feedback and you're giving feedback in a continuously flexible way, then what happens is that means that the assessment is open. Um, and we see that assessment is continuous and now it emphasizes the point. Time frames are flexible and learners learn at their own pace. Well, that makes, if time frames are flexible and learners learn at their own pace, that definitely makes pacing uh, more open. Okay, that's a very clear reference to pacing being open. Um, comment, constructive criticism and assistance from the wider community, the wider community. You want the wider community to get involved. And that for me points to the fact that you want the relationship between the everyday and the specialized to be open. If you're allowing the wider community to have a lot more say in education. Transformational OBE involves the integration of concepts. Ah, there's the word integration. Now we know that the word integration is open. In a cross-curricular approach. Ah between specializations, okay, cross-curricular, cross the different subjects, it's open, all right, cross-curricular. 
um, embraces not only the structure of the curriculum, but also the methods by which instruction is delivered and meaningful uh, assessments made. So they want a situation where they have a radical openness to the curriculum as a whole. And I think this quote clearly points to the fact that with Curriculum 2005, we have a radically open modality within education. So we shifted from apartheid, which was radically closed, to Curriculum 2005, which is radically open. Um, so now let's take a look at what happened with the RNCS. Now, the RNCS, uh, what happened was, and again, let me just read the statement on the top, the revised national curriculum statement. There were major issues with the implementation of Curriculum 2005, forcing policy reform to solidify the variables while still sticking to the moral and emotional appeal of learner-centered outcomes-based education. And we had the situation in the early 2000s where we knew that uh, Curriculum 2005 and outcomes-based education wasn't working properly. We knew that it was too complex a setup for most of our teachers. So we had to try and shift it into a more simple and a more closed or solid curriculum. But at the same time as that, there was a very strong appeal, emotional and ideological appeal, to the openness and the democratic nature of uh, Curriculum 2005. So what I want to do over here is pause it, read it, but what I want you to really look for are two statements which point to the kind of attempt to hold on to both the um, open order of Curriculum 2005, but at the same time try to close the boundaries a little bit. Now, the space for me where that comes out clearly are in, in two places. And let me just kind of point to one of them um, and let's see how it works like that. And let's go take the last sentence over here. This curriculum accordingly encourages active learning, creativity and innovation. OK, now, if you if you encouraging creativity, active learning and innovation, that's pretty much an open code. OK, you're allowing for a number of different options to happen at the same time and you're encouraging that. But then it says even. As it assists teachers in focusing their attention on key areas of knowledge, skill and values that ought to be covered. Well, if you're trying to get them to focus on key areas of knowledge, skill and values that ought to be covered, well, that's solid. But then, whilst respecting the rights of learners, well, the, you can hear there that they're trying to say, actually, we've got to actually keep it open because we've got to make sure that we listen and are flexible to the learners. So in that one sentence, you can hear a situation where it goes from open to solid to open. And this is the nature of the RNCS where you have a situation where it tries to keep uh, things open on one level, but recognizes the need to start to specify the curriculum more tightly. Let's take a look at another sentence. It goes beyond spelling out what the learning outcome should be. It goes beyond spelling out what the learning sh outcome should be and provides the necessary detail required to show how the outcomes can be realized without restricting teachers to a narrow syllabus. Now that's really interesting, okay, because on the one side you want to go beyond spelling out what the learning outcome should be, providing the necessary detail. And by necessary detail what happens is you're st starting to specify things more clearly, okay, so that's solid, right? But at the same time as that you don't want to restrict the teachers to a narrow syllabus. So you're trying to play the line between specifying and keeping things open. So we have a situation in the revised national curriculum statement where it's quite difficult to use either a solid code or an open code. And what we have to do is we have to start to consider that maybe what we have here is we have a code which is shifting from open to solid. And we know that in uh, one of our previous videos we discussed that as being a line which is moving from open to solid, uh, from solid to open. Now, if that's the RNCS, let's take a look at uh, 
the shift into caps. And this is fascinating when you take a look at it because we have a situation where uh, things change quite radically. So if we've now had a situation where apartheid education were solid lines, curriculum 2005, radically open lines, the RNC is starting to shift from open lines to solid lines, we can kind of predict what's going to happen with uh, Angie Mocheka and her statement on the death of OBE. Now, when we hear the death of OBE, that means the death of open lines. And let's see if we can see this in the, her statement, uh, which follows. Please, again, pause, try do it yourself. And after doing that, we'll take a look at it together. Right, so let's take a look at her statement. Uh, and let's get past the rhetorical statement over here, although that became famous. And the first thing I'd like to look at is a statement that um, it is instructive to remember that the introduction of both Curriculum 2005 and the NCS were highly contested. These involved professional, business, religious constituencies, right? That's all the everyday communities. Now, these are everyday kind of uh, communities that are outside of education. And she says we should be steadfast and not let them determine what is good for education now. And there you can hear her saying the relationship between communities and schooling, it should be that we close it down radically, right? That it should be a situation where it's completely solid and we draw a line between school and the everyday uh, communities around that. We should be steadfast and not let them determine what is good for education now. There, the whole situation, you can hear that very clearly um, going towards the everyday specialized being solid. Because there is a very strange anomaly in our system where the importance of textbooks, now if, if textbooks are important, that means that you are determining selection and sequencing and to some extent pacing. Because if you have one textbook, well, that's one way to do things. And she says, you know, it used to be that the importance of textbooks and curriculum delivery was no longer appreciated. We forgot about that, she says. We opened the lines. We tried to let people do what they wanted. Now we're going to close the line down. The department has noted that teachers' concerns that the development of learning materials is best placed in the hands of experts because it's only people who are experts in their field of study that are best placed to develop textbooks and learning materials. And in this, you can hear that if that's the case, what's going to happen is the selection is going to be solid, it's going to be determined, the sequence is going to be solid and determined. And that has to do because of the renewed importance of textbooks. Um, and that's quite uh, uh, interesting development. And this is, of course, why she got into such trouble when she um, couldn't deliver the textbooks. Uh, in this review, teachers said that the development of learning materials is not the core business of teachers. It also erodes their teaching time. Therefore, textbooks are going to be used as an effective tool to ensure consistency, coverage, appropriate pacing, and better quality in terms of instruction and content. So there we go, pacing, definitely also solid. And what we have is we have a sense that what she's done is she solidified um, the lines across the board. So if we have to do a summary situation where we decide that what we're going to do is um, try to give a summary statement of it, that's quite interesting in terms of what's happened. We have a situation where in terms of apartheid education, things were solid. In terms of transformational OBE in Curriculum 2005, things were radically open. With the RNCS, we had a situation where it shifted from being open to becoming more solid. And then with CAPS, we have a situation where everything becomes solid again. And of course, the question now is, what is the difference between this solid line over here and this solid line over here? And a lot has changed in terms of um, that development. But it is a really strange phenomenon to note that we started off solid and then shifted radically to open. And now we're going back towards a solid curriculum. And this points to the fact that educational analysis can start to show 
you some of the patterns, but to understand some of the deeper reasons why things happen, you have to plunge into the political, economic, moral, emotional, um, ideological forces which also determine education. And to do that, we'll have to go into deeper and other forms of educational analysis.